So you've been drooling over Harley Benton's SC1000 progressive line guitar with active pickups, and you're wondering if it's worth the price. I mean, how could it not be? It's pretty cheap. But is it actually a good guitar? Well, let's find out. We're gonna go over the specs. I'm gonna tell you some design flaws and some things you need to know what to expect, some areas that they made some cuts so that they could deliver some better things in some other areas. And then we're gonna plug it in and hear what it sounds like. My version is actually the version without EMGs. You can pay a little more and get EMG pickups, but I got Harley Benton's HBZ active pickups. They're pretty hot. You might wanna lower them a little because they're picking up quite a bit of extra string harmonics and noises, you know, kind of like that nasty sound that you hear up there. So you hear this little ringing every once in a while. You might wanna lower those pickups. First impressions. When I got this thing out of the box and I looked at the neck, my jaw dropped. I mean, I paid 175 bucks plus shipping for this guitar, brand new from Thoman, and I was not expecting the quality of neck that we have here. This is called amaranth, I believe, the fretboard, the wood that this is made of. The quality of the inlays stuck out to me because I was expecting something along the lines of a cheaper or mid-range Epiphone. The inlays on some of those cheaper Epiphones are not as clear. They're a little muddy compared to my Gibson guitars. But this thing, I mean, the quality of the inlays was outstanding. So I was really happy with that. I'm kind of a sucker for really nice fretboards and inlays. And the inlays here, I mean, they look like something off of a thousand dollar guitar. So I was blown away by that. The quality of the wood on the fretboard is pretty incredible too. Another pet peeve of mine for cheap guitars is when they've got like a light rose wood and it's not real dark, but this is like a deep, rich, almost looks like a light ebony. And I really like the way the fretboard looks. So I don't think you're gonna have any problems with the quality of the fretboard. That seems to be where they spent most of their time and money. The headstock here, you can see it's got some, uh, you know, kind of perloid holographic lettering. That's really nice looking. It doesn't look cheap like a lot of cheaper guitars. They kind of skip on the lettering, but that looks really cool. It's holding up. I really can't tell what they did for the binding. I think they just taped off the guitar and they painted over it. They left some of the neck unpainted to simulate binding. That is my guess as to what's going on here because if you look closely, the paint lines are not perfectly straight. Like you can see some blemishes there and it's just, it's just like, like they took a marker and like kind of didn't do quite a straight line or something. So it's not gonna look like perfect binding. It's gonna almost look like it's painted on. There is a little odd blemish, like a bump here where the body connects to the fretboard here. I don't know what that's about. If you look really closely right here, the paint job is not perfect. You'll see that some of the lines just are not symmetrical and it might even look like somebody tried to freehand something and they got just a little bit off. So you can expect a really nice neck and some passable binding that's not real binding. Granted, this is one of the cheaper Harley Bentons, but they did cut some corners on some of the cosmetics. Now, it still looks really good from even like two or three feet away, but if you, if you look up under a microscope, like you're gonna see that something is just not quite right. It's just a little cheap. So that's what's gonna differentiate this guitar from the LTD or the ESP that it's trying to emulate. Now, mine even had a little crack here and here. I think it's just in the paint. I don't know if it's really in the wood itself but that was a little bit concerning, but it seems to be just like a cosmetic crack. And I'm pretty happy that more of the, mo the money was put into the fretboard. I'd rather have a nice neck than a nice body. The bridge. I really like the way it looks, but it does have a design flaw. 
but prevents you from being able to set the intonation. So as of when I got mine in February of 2023, this bridge actually needed to be adjusted. I made another video to kind of go through what I had to do to fix this, but essentially you have to take the spring out and you have to clip it because you won't be able to move the saddle as far to the left as you need to go to get the octave E, A, and D in tune. The other three strings will be fine. So at the end of this video, I will link to another video where I kind of go through in more detail what I had to do there. Another thing to note on, uh, I have two Harley Benton guitars and they both had this problem. These tuners were pretty loose when I got them and they'd kind of get bumped easily. So I actually took a screwdriver and I just tightened them a little and they quit doing that because I would easily bump it out of tune before I did that. On the back here, you will see that there is actually a nine volt uh, panel that you can take off, which is really nice, believe it or not. Some of the guitars I've bought that have nine volt batteries, they just shove it in this compartment. So you gotta get your screwdriver out. So if you're at a gig and your battery goes out, you're like, oh crap, like, what am I gonna do? I need a screwdriver, anybody got one? Not to worry about this guitar, just pop that thing right off and you can change the battery. The other thing that's really nice is you, you see the cutaway here. On my Les Pauls, I am always like rubbing my rib raw right here when I'm playing. And with this nice cutaway here, I don't have to worry about that. I'm no longer cutting my rib and leaving like a rug burn or a rash there. So what do you say we plug this puppy in and see what she sounds like? Okay, crunch channel, neck pickup. Middle pick up. Bridge. Let's try some more distortion. This is the tight gain channel on my Mesa Stiletto bridge pickup. it's pretty hot like if you want to do a pinch harmonic it's not that hard it's kind of cool so pretty hot let's try the bridge pickup
can hear there's actually quite a bit of overdrive. Like, like I said, these pickups are just really hot. So you might not get that glossy clean tone out of these. Let's try to back that gain off a little more. I've mentioned some of the cosmetic blemishes. I mentioned the binding. I've mentioned, you know, this looks cool from far away, but if you really look at it, it's got some flaws and the cracks. That's concerning. And so is this bridge flaw. That was weird, but it's totally fixable. Overall, I mean, the quality of the neck, the sound, I mean, some of the features like the cutaway, I do highly recommend this guitar for a cheap guitar. This is one of the best guitars in the $200 range that you could possibly buy. I think the value is twice as much as the price. So I recommend it. If you want to know how to fix your bridge and set the intonation and clip that, that spring I was talking about with the design flaw, click on the video link here and check that video out. It'll go into a little bit more detail on how to do that. All right, if you like this video, hit like and subscribe if you want to see some more reviews and original music and cool guitar stuff. I will see you guys soon. Rock out!